Folks, I saw uh, this particular clip on uh, CNN uh, this morning, and you know, I basically uh, was thinking about it all day and how I was going to come at it. And I got to be honest with you, um, in my opinion, this is the uh, chickens coming home to roost. Now, um, this particular CNN clip, um, you note that in the center, Jake Taper, Tapper, whatever way you want to pronounce his name. And on the right, you have uh, Jorge Ramos, who uh, basically is a well-known uh, personality from uh, Telemundo, which is a uh, Spanish language uh, channel, uh, a major Spanish language channel. Um, I think it's got more viewership, to be honest with you, than uh, CNN and a lot of uh, these other cable channels, uh, particularly because of the number of uh, Hispanic people uh, that have access to it. <coughs> Excuse me. But the person on the left that you won't recognize is Arizona State Senator Steve Montenegro. Okay. Now, Steve Montenegro uh, is an immigrant uh, who came here when he was uh, five years old. And basically, if you uh, look at his name, Montenegro, that translates in English to uh, Black a Mountain, i.e., uh, Indians pretty much inhabited the mountains in, I believe he's from El Salvador, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so you could see that this man is quote unquote Hispanic, which is nothing but, you know, a mixture of uh, Hispanics and uh, Indians, and in some cases, uh, Hispanics and black people. But in his case, I believe it's Hispanic and, and Indians. You have a lot of people in those South American countries where the Spanish came in and had their way with the uh, natives who uh, uh, basically Indians and created uh, people that look like him. But uh, if you know his first name, I bet you his name is not Steve. I bet you his name is Esteban. And he's gone by the Americanization of his name, of the name Esteban, which is uh, Stephen or Steve. This piece of crap uh, had me thinking. And they basically, and you're going to see the clip, this is basically a debate about the pardon of uh, Joe Arpaio, okay? And as I stated earlier, this is the chickens coming home to roost because normally you would see um, a, a black person, Republican, uh, that would be supporting uh, the Republican platform, uh, people like uh, Donald Trump, and uh, anybody that was going after uh, black people. I could, I guess, stick in a uh, super coon, uh, Sheriff Clark could quite as easily be sitting on the left side of your picture and on the right uh, side, somebody like a Roland Martin, if you want an analogy where black people are used. But this is one of the few times that you're going to see uh, two Hispanic gentlemen arguing about the uh, issues that deal, deal with the Hispanic community. So I want to see how uh, you guys feel now that the shoe is on the other foot. Now I'm going to play this entire clip and uh, the guy on the, obviously on the left, he is uh, going to bring up quite a few things and he's going to try to tie uh, certain things together. I'll try to stop uh, the video and tell you where he's uh, misconflating things. But, you know, you got a brain, so you should be able to see where he's sitting there filibustering, uh, deflecting, and in some cases, uh, just straight out the lying for yourself. But uh, Jorge Ramos is going to be extremely frustrated with this guy, and he's going to point out certain things that uh, this uh, Mr. I shouldn't say this guy, that uh, Mr. Montenegro um, is going to either deflect or ignore. And you'll also note 
that uh, Mr. Montenegro didn't answer the final question posed to him by uh, Mr. Uh, Taper, and he's going to jump back in uh, to try to uh, conflate and defend a position that I believe really doesn't have any uh, defense. But anyway, here we go. Check this out. Senator Montenegro, let me start with you. Arizona has two Republicans in the U.S. Senate. Both of them came out against the pardon of Sheriff Arpaio done this way. Senator Jeff Flake tweeting, quote, regarding the Arpaio pardon, I would have preferred that the president honor the judicial process and let it take its course. Senator John McCain was even blunter. He tweeted, quote, the president's pardon of Joe Arpaio, who illegally profiled Latinos, undermines his claim for the respect of rule of law, unquote. Uh, Senator, why, in your view, are your two Republican U.S. senators wrong about this issue? Well, thank you for having me, Jake, first of all. And, you know, there's, there's long-standing disagreements uh, between those gentlemen and Sheriff Joe. I don't want to get in the middle of that, but I can tell you that there's also congressmen here in Arizona, like Congressman Trent Franks, Congressman Paul Gosar, Ca Congressman Andy Biggs, who have lauded and, and stand strongly behind the president's decision to uh, pardon Sheriff Joe. And look, what's on display here is, frankly, the hypocrisy from the left. You know, you had President Obama pardoning hundreds of thugs. You had President Obama, I think his name was Oscar Lopez Rivera, who was a convicted, uh, unrepented terrorist. And where was the outrage from the left then when he... Now, okay, uh, they always like to go back and say, well, you guys did it, and then try to bring up examples. Now, Oscar Lopez Rivera, yes, w was an unrepentant person. Now, depending on which side of the uh, fence you're on, he was either a terrorist, which is what this gentleman said, or he was a Puerto Rican freedom fighter. And that's what he declared himself to be. Um, he was convicted of, of various crimes, including sedition, uh, transporting explosives, weapons, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He got 55 years for that. Okay, and then he got another 15 years for trying to escape a federal prison. So he got a grand total of 70, and uh, that uh, his conviction occurred back in the 80s. So he did at least 30 uh, or half of the uh, original stretch, plus another uh, five if uh, you know you want to do your math. So let, let's just say he did uh, a straight uh, 30 years. Okay, 37 years if he got convicted in 80. He did 37 years, folks. Okay, he was convicted, sentenced, and did 37 years. Okay, he didn't kill anybody. Um, he didn't uh, uh, destroy any families, but he was obviously fighting for his cause, and he, he declared himself a non-combatant political uh, prisoner. OK, this guy's got the nerve to uh, compare him to a uh, Joe Apio who has destroyed families. He has sat snatched mothers, fathers, uh, children, and basically detained and gotten them deported, which God only knows how many hundreds of families, because this guy has has actually done that to thousands of individuals in the state of Arizona. So let's just say uh, one family per uh, arrest, that's a thousand families that he's affected. Uh, Mr. Uh, Rivera ha in no way, shape or form uh, had that effect. Yet this prick wants to equate the two. And then obviously uh, anything that Obama's done as far as pardons, this guy is gonna call every last single one of them thugs. Whereas a lot of the guys that uh, President Obama pardoned uh, basically what had been arrested and convicted on three strikes uh, on uh, s simple uh, drug charges. Possession uh, was the uh, number one thing that uh, he uh, basically pardoned a lot of people for. Because if you, know, you possess a joint, depending on uh, your locality, and uh, you had been arrested twice or anything else, and they busted you with a joint, that would be your third strike. So you were gonna do basically life uh, for a joint of marijuana, uh-uh. But I digress, let uh, the interview continue.
he was pardoning uh, thugs and murderers and unrepentant terrorists like that. But you have here uh, an 85 year old man who frankly has served his country since he was 18. Um, and the best the left can come up with after they do a political persecution on him is a misdemeanor who even then that was, I don't think, uh, I don't believe that was done correctly through the judicial process. So what we're seeing here is outrage. Uh, now, he, yeah, and he's right that uh, Arpaio got uh, convicted uh, by a judge. It wasn't a jury trial, it was by a judge of a minor, minor offense. He could have been brought up on a major offense of uh, ignoring uh, a federal uh, order by a federal judge. That would have been a felony, but uh, they basically uh, got it knocked down to a minor uh, offense, a misdemeanor, uh, for which uh, they were going to probably sentence him to 30 days and then suspend his sentence, but it never even got that far. Uh, on one end, a double standard, but not, not when it comes to actual terrorists or unrepentant thugs and terrorists like Oscar Lopez Rivera. All right. Uh, I think Senator Montenegro is forgetting that he's an immigrant from El Salvador and that Sheriff Joe Arpaio discriminated against many people, just like you, Senator. Um, by pardoning Arpaio, uh, President Trump is defending racism. Arpaio violated the Constitution. He discriminated against Latinos. He was convicted of a criminal contempt of court. And, and not only that, the Department of Justice, ACLU, two judges agreed that he practiced and promoted racial profiling. In other words, he was accused of racism. Sheriff Arpaio discriminated against thousands of Latinos. He destroyed many homes. And that's precisely, that's precisely the man that in the middle of a hurricane, President Trump part. Well, Jake, let, let me respond to that. I, I, I do remember that I'm an immigrant myself. And frankly, uh, Sheriff Joe has endorsed me in my campaigns in the past and supported me. And there we have it. Sheriff Joe supported him. So Sheriff Joe, uh, by supporting him, uh, who's basically selling out the uh, Hispanic people, Sheriff Joe could now claim that he's not racist. Look, I supported a Hispanic man in his um, run for state senate. Camouflage. For years as well. So this narrative that the left tries to push that Republicans are racist, look, if you're looking at the screen right now and you think I'm a white Republican, you need to adjust your screen. This is the narrative. Okay, now notice, uh, he's stating the obvious. Uh, nobody... Uh, there said he was a white Republican. And also nobody there said that the GOP is racist. There are some racists within the GOP, just like there are some racists within the uh, Democratic Party. There's races across the board, all right? But uh, this gentleman is basically going to try to form a false argument and place that false argument uh, on uh, people that are progressive he says less left, I say progressive. He's going to try to uh, uh, hang that particular argument around the necks of progressives, and that is not, in fact, the case. The progressives do not believe that all Republicans are racist, but that there are racists, a lot more racists within the uh, Republican Party uh, than there are, I guess you could say, within the Democratic Party. Now. I'm not going to come down on that one because there's a bunch of racists in the Democratic Party as well. ...that the left continues to push against Republicans, and it's simply not true. And frankly, look, the judges that, were, that started this case in the first place, first of all, the, the judge should have recused herself because she had a, a family member that was part of the original lawsuit against Sheriff Joe. Um, she should have recused herself in the first place. And then when it comes time to, to have a jury or a trial, the, the Obama administration takes this case and doesn't even allow there to be a jury uh, or a trial by jury. Again, there's so many things. Sheriff Joe would have won this case on appeal because the process was very grossly uh, neglected. But 
again, folks like Jorge, that they is use true. these talking points. They use these talking points against Republicans about racism. Like, yeah, look, I can I can start start doing this interview in Spanish if we want to. I'm a Republican. Does that make me a racist? No. I'm an immigrant myself. Does that make me a racist? No. It's just that we respect the rule of law. We want to make sure that we are obeying, that we are upholding the best of the process that we have in this country. Or I got yeah, but you're not respecting the rule of law right there, Mr. Montenegro, because uh, the fact is that Sheriff Arpaio is a convicted criminal, and he was accused of racism. And I, your, your last name is in Spanish, Montenegro, not, not in English. And I find it really disturbing and sad when an immigrant... Yeah, like I said, your last name is in Spanish, Montenegro, which means Black Mountain. ...immigrant like you decides to turn his back on other immigrants and forgets where he comes from. I, I think and, you and do I have a choice, Mr. Montenegro, to be on the right side of history. When to be Senator, on the, on Senator, Senator let, let, Jorge, let Jorge finish, please. Go ahead, Jorge. You had the chance, Mr. Montenegro, and President Trump had the chance to be on the right side of history, and that is with tolerance, with diversity, uh, with democracy. And you, Mr. Montenegro, and President Trump decided to be on the wrong side of history, and that is with racism and with discrimination. That's precisely what happened when President Trump pardoned Arpaio. Go ahead, Senator. Uh, again, this is part of the, uh, the narrative. I mean, the left, they resort to personal attacks when they can't stand on facts. I mean, the Republican Party here in Arizona, I was the majority leader in the House of Representatives. That, that's the Republican Party not being racist. I'm, I'm a statewide candidate right now for Secretary of State for the Republican Party. That's not racism. Th this narrative that Republicans are racist let me stop him right there. Uh, it's called the tokenism, okay? And uh, because you basically are supporting the uh, Republican ideology, um, toe on the line, they had no problem basically uh, making you uh, the uh, chairman of the committee. That's uh, just like uh, what they did with the uh, GOP, the national GOP now, when they made Richard Steele, a black man, the head of the RNC. Uh, he didn't last too long in that position, okay? But because uh, he supported uh, them and wouldn't go out against them initially, they uh, had no problem uh, installing him in that position. But as soon as he started trying to moderate uh, the uh, GOP to bring in more uh, black people to address more black issues, his ass was out. And that's why you see him a lot of times on MSNBC. And you'll see him uh, giving a, I would call it, a more realistic uh, slant on uh, where the Republican Party should go. But I digress. It's, it's what the liberals and the left resort to when, they have, when they're left out of facts. When they have defending someone who is being accused of racism, Mr. Montenegro. You, no, you're I'm, defending I'm, I'm, Donald Trump, uh, a, a, a person who accused Mexican immigrants for being rapists and criminals, and that you know precisely that is not true. So you are defending Arpaio, who's been accused of discrimination. You're defending President Trump, who's, who's been accused of racist remarks. Those are the people you are defending, Mr. Montenegro, an immigrant from El Salvador. Jorge, in this country, we follow the rule of law. In this country, we believe that everybody... I, I love it when they say they follow the rule of law. Yet, this guy is defending a guy who broke the law, okay? Who racially profiled. Yet, this guy is embracing him. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I can't use the word coon because basically <laughs> that word is uh, reserved uh, for uh, black people who work against their own. Uh, so I got to find out what the uh, Hispanic word is uh, for uh, a person that uh, demonstrates uh, the willingness to uh, work against their own people. When I find that word, I'll let you guys know. Has the right to, to a process to be charged. If they're going to be charged to a process that's going he was to be charged. Uh, well, Arpaio was charged. Correct. And there was a judge who should have recused herself because she had her, her, the original family member was one of the folks that started the lawsuit against Sheriff Joe. And, and then when it's time to actually do the, jur the, the trial, as the Constitution states, we need to make sure that we either do it if it's going to be criminal, which, by the way, this happens in other countries. This is a long process. I, I, this happens in other countries. It's called political 
persecution. This happens no, in no countries called political, political persecution. It's called discrimination. When folks don't agree with you, they use the, the judicial system to try. Okay, and folks, it's not political persecution. This is racism. Now, if they had gone after uh, Joe Apayo for um, uh, the actions that uh, he took uh, against uh, President Obama as far as trying to generate um, support of Donald Trump, that would have been political persecution. But this is racism. Not political persecution. That does not happen in this country. In this country, we follow the rule of law. In it's this country, we actually right? have a system. And, and this, what Sheriff Arpaio did is about about discrimination, Mr. Montenegro. What, like what Sheriff Arpaio did is, 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 is discrimination. And, and yet, let me just say something about President mm -hmm. Trump because I think that if President Trump wanted to distance himself from racism, he had a, a great opportunity and he just didn't use it. Uh, not only he pardoned Arpaio, but this happened after he refused for two days to condemn by name the KKK. This happened after he equated white supremacists with those marching against racism. This happened after he called very fine people um, those who decided to march with neo-Nazis. And after that, he pardoned Arpaio. But I'm really concerned, Jake, really, really concerned, is that with these actions, President Trump is making racism something normal. And by defending someone who's been accused of racist behavior like, like Arpaio, He's, he's telling everybody in the United States, you know, it is okay. It is okay. Racism is okay in this country. And I'm, I'm really disturbed and concerned about that because well, if President Trump is doing that and Arpaio are doing that, then what's the message for the rest of the people who voted for Donald Trump? Well, and let me add. Now, let me stop him right there. Uh, he, he makes good arguments, but this is my question. Where was he... Jorge Ramos, when all of these fucking racist ass cops that kill black people uh, and the few that actually went to trial and the majority that uh, were found not guilty, where was his outrage against those uh, verdicts? Okay, I, I wanted to see him jumping up and down uh, as far as black people are concerned, but obviously he um, is... A, going to be more concerned about the Hispanic people. And uh, don't get me wrong, he should be. But he should have also uh, been on our side when all this stuff was going down. But as far as I know, and I could be wrong, all you got from him basically is uh, crickets. To that look, I think Americans are seeing right through this. This doesn't have to do with racism. This is the left having a double standard it's when racism. you have the left. Part, well, when, when we're talking about the left pardoning thugs, unrepented terrorists, when we have the left, left cheering for that, when we have the left cheering for the pardon of traitors that give away secrets that put in danger and imperil Americans and everybody in this country, and they cheer just because a man wants a sex change, I mean, that is what's on display here, the hypocrisy from the left, the hypocrisy and the left trying to make racism Mr. an Montenegro, issue you are when the fact is that we are a criminal country of the rule of law. Okay, no, you, you, where was your outrage when, when uh, President Obama was pardoning unrepented terrorists, Jorge? Where was you are, your you outrage are defending right now, Mr. Montenegro? You are defending where was your outrage? outrage? I don't know, if, I could, if I could just interject myself for one second, Jorge, before we go, I, I just wanted to check in because obviously at the beginning of the Trump campaign, uh, you famously clashed with uh, that candidate Trump at a news conference. He told you to sit down and go back to Univision. Um, obviously now uh, we are uh, eight months in to the Trump presidency, or seven months and change. Um, the Latino community has been able to, to actually take measure of his time in office. Um, what's your read on how he is being received by the Latino community in this country in general? My, my read is that, that we were right when they detected racism when President Trump said that Mexican immigrants were criminals and rapists. And, and when he told you, Jake, that Josh Curiel couldn't do his job simply because he's a Latino. That's again, as you mentioned back then, a definition of discrimination and racism. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say that we were right. I'm sorry to say that what we detected on June 16, 
2015. Um, it's happening here because it, it follow a path not only his criticism of immigrants, but then what he said about Josh Curiel, and then what, what how he responded to the violence in Virginia, and now he's part on to Arpaio. I'm wondering what's next. Maybe DACA, maybe a wall. Who knows? Senator, uh, uh, Senator Montegranger, before I let you go, I, I really would love to know what you would like President Trump to do when it comes to the so-called dreamers, the, the immigrants that were brought into this country illegally when they were children. Uh, they were given uh, temporary status by President Obama. Uh, President Trump has a decision to make. What do you want him to do when it comes to the dreamers? Okay, now this is what I was referring to as far as uh, Jake uh, Taper asking a serious question, and this guy is going to absolutely ignore the question, never answer it, and run back to his uh, GOP talking points. Well, really quickly, uh, you know, again, what we're seeing right here is the left trying to make this about racism. And, and it's, I think that even Hispanics, the, the, the president received more support uh, from Latinos this last election than many because they're able to... Okay, now, notice he said more support from Latinos. He did not get the majority of the Latinos to vote for him. He did get more support than uh, previous GOP uh, nominees for the presidency. So you got to be careful and listen to exactly what he's saying. He said more, not the majority. So if, and I'm just throwing a number out there, and to be honest with you, I think that he got somewhere around 33% uh, of the uh, Hispanic vote. And in the past, I think, uh, well, actually, I think Bush got uh, closer to 40% of the uh, Hispanic vote. So Bush got more than he did. But um, I believe uh, Romney uh, got somewhere uh, around 27%. So Trump did get more uh, votes from uh, Hispanics, again, somewhere around 33 to 35%. But he got nowhere near majority support from the Hispanics. Be careful and listen to what these guys actually say. See right through that as well. And I think that the president, you know, the decisions that he's going to make are based on the rule of law in this country. We are a country that respects the rule of law. It is about and racism, we can't, Mr. We can't, we can't, we cannot expect uh, the, the Americans in this country to take the fault for decisions that have been made from other families, you know? I, I think that the president's gonna look at, at the information that he has, and he's gonna make the right decision based on what our country needs, on what is right for our families, whether it's Mr. Montenegro, you were brought here when you were five society, years old. That's correct, and I can't you, you, you will, and, I and then you don't want you. other immigrants and, and like you, is, dreamers like you, no, who came here when they were very young. I thought, you I, thought, I, thought I could to, finish my thought. Same Jay. opportunities that you have. That's, Mr. Again, Montana, when what, you were brought here when you were five, we why don't you give the same Jorge, chance to this others? Is what, this is what right, the left is to. They don't, they don't allow us to finish speaking. The opportunities here. Hispanics, Latino families come to this country because they respect the rule of law. In other countries, they do not respect the rule of law. That's why people come okay. here. So the law protects everybody. And I think that, that when it comes to personal attacks like the ones that uh, Jorge makes, you know, people see right through that. We are a country that's better than this. We're better than this. All right. And I think that as time goes by, we'll be able to see that. All right, Senator Montenegro, uh, Jorge Ramos, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. All right, so the, you got the interview. And again, I said, this is the chickens coming home to roost. Now, I'm going to make a statement, okay, that is going to surprise you, all right? And I'm going to make it for a reason. I only wish, and this is with the knowledge uh, that uh, Joe Arpaio, did, he didn't just go after uh, Hispanics. He went after black people, too, but not to the same extent that uh, he went after uh, people of Hispanic origin. I would love it for every state and uh, a lot of uh, counties within those states to have a Joe Arpaio in them, and specifically because of uh, him going after uh, Hispanic uh, people. Now, you would say, I'm crazy. And, well, maybe you're right, I might be a little crazy, but uh, there's a method to my madness. If you have Joe Apollos all over the place, okay, that, in my opinion, would have the effect, number one, of castigating uh, Mr. Montenegro as far as his support for these guys, and number two, it would let 
the Hispanic community, a segment of which believe uh, that they are in the uh, white or um, Caucasian camp, uh, it would let them know that the Caucasians have no love for them. And that would serve to bring them back to where they belong, and that is with black people. Hispanics are closer to black people than they are to white people, but for some reason, I guess they want to, I guess, be uh, brought into the fold of the majority, uh, which at this time is uh, Caucasian. They want to uh, be counted or brought into their fold. So they are more than happy uh, to uh, do their dirty work, i.e. Uh, working against black people. But now you get guys that like Joe Apario, who lets uh, Hispanic people know exactly how some, not all, white people feel about them. So we need a lot more Joe Arpaios in order for the Hispanic people to come home and to uh, get together with us in order for us to get the justice, rights, privileges, and everything else that we have earned and definitely deserve.